All right, so this round uh, is one that they, they beat us on. It's uh, the first map of our semifinal series. It's on Dust2, and just kind of want to show you a little bit of the you know the, the different styles that VP has, which made it awkward for us. Here's a pretty standard cat exec using their utility. We don't have a whole lot of counter nades because it's late in the round. We do have some flashbangs. I think what made VP so difficult to play against in this matchup and what makes them such a unique opponent is this kind of catwalk hit that they're bringing out isn't really like the same explosiveness that you see from a lot of a lot of like the European and other North American teams when they have this exec. You can see when they're creeping out behind these standard smokes on catwalk, they're just looking for a fight the whole way. So actually, we missed time the, the pop flash that would allow Mike to peek. Also, it's thrown in the wrong location, it's thrown in front of him, but even if it's thrown behind him, they're not going to be blind or, or they're going to be staying far back, so it's not kind of in that intended kill zone. Um, and from there, with the way that they kind of creep up, Yekandar finds a really nice pathing and timing to get close up when Grim didn't realize it, finds an easy pick there. And even then, he's not like explosively trying to attack, so it just makes it all very awkward. Your timings from for where and when you're expecting fights are different, and then all the time you can see Jame is actually just lurking in middle. He's essentially cutting the map in half. Um, Naf and Stewie both fall to him. They can't rotate over to actually even get involved in the action. Uh, this first map on Mirage, uh, our, our map pick in the series, um, obviously uh, it's, a, it's an anti-eco, anti-force buy from us. Actually, they, they don't do anything that crazy, but I wanted to show this off because obviously they did some decent prep. Um, we had known as well in our previous matchup uh, on, this, on this map against Vitality, I believe, we'd actually gone to the B bomb site quite a bit and we'd done it on our anti-eco, anti-force buys like I think two or three times throughout that. So yeah, this is kind of a, this is, this is a gamble stack from VP, obviously. The AWP is all alone over towards A and in window. It's obviously cheating over now. Four, four pistols stacking into the bomb site, but it's an, it's an educated gamble. Um, and this was a small detail that we kind of knew about going into the match and had discussed, but in the heat of the moment, um, maybe slipped our minds, maybe we just forgot to bring it up. Uh, and, and a mistake on our part that's very costly. This went, you know, from 6-5, you win this, you're looking at 7-5, you're looking at a solid T-half. Um, and this kind of really, really hurt not only the scoreline, but just the momentum in the game and actually uh, Stewie almost bringing it back. But yeah, that, that's a good read and good research and good prep from Virtus Pro, and, and they caught us on that one uh, pretty hard. This is another round that Virtus Pro, Virtus Pro played uh, really well against us on, on Mirage. And, and I mean, throughout this half, they'd hit us with a bunch of kind of slower, a little bit quieter, more methodical rounds. And and this is kind of a pretty crazy change of the pace. And this is these are the kind of things that we talk about, um, the high risk, high reward style of Counter-Strike that VP plays. I know a lot of pro players are discussing it at the moment. Um, this is a plant split onto the A bomb site out of spawn. Two players in Palace, one at ramp. But also Yekandar solo and mid, he's got all the mid control smokes, which usually suggests, you know, sometimes it's going to be, you know, a control. So you're kind of going to understand where people are going. And but, but this is the wild part of just walking through the smoke entirely. And every team has a play um, kind of like that. And every team, you know, has there's a varying level of risk when you go through the smoke. Sometimes it's accompanied by a flashbang. Sometimes there's two players to ensure the trade. Sometimes like this one, it's just the lurk. Um, and, and unfortunately for us, Part of the reason why this is such a powerful round is they call it onto a, onto a situation where our setup at the A-bomb site isn't really ideal. Uh, you can see Grim here under the balcony um, in a position where he's not, he doesn't really have anything fully covered, right? He's relying on other people to kind of take the attention away and he can and he can sort of surprise them. Unfortunately for Fallen with the op over at Ticket, he's looking towards a ramp. And again, probably a miscommunication. Um, just has no idea that he's fully exposed to Palace. So it's just the easiest entry frag of Kickert's life, and that makes it the easiest follow-up frag of Yekandar's life. Um, so all those risks paid off, obviously with the help of some mistakes uh, from, from our defensive setup. And that, that gives VP essentially a free 15th round and another frustrating round for us when you're trying to muster together some morale to, 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 to bring this back and force overtime. So I am Katowice, uh, uh for us as Team Liquid um, ha had its up and downs. Actually, it probably had way more, way more ups, um, but I think the, the down of losing to VP in the semifinals um, was, was pretty harsh. Not, not so much because of the loss. I think uh, you know, the conversation we had after the, after the game was how we lost it was more upsetting. Um, you know, for me, a lot of a lot of the kind of the final talk to the team after Katowice ended was to focus on the positive, um, which was nice win over Vitality. 
nice win over Navi. Both of those teams containing, you know, two of the two best players in the world for the past two years. I think we left Europe after this six week uh, boot camp and stretch of tournaments um, with an overall series lead over Navi, who's the number one team in the world. So there's a lot of positives to take away from it. And still just some similar, some very uh, persistent issues plaguing the team, kind of dragging us down towards the end in the semifinal. Um, which is going to be a focus point for the next boot camp that we have. Uh, probably a focus point for the rest of the year, if I'm quite honest. This this has been a fun tournament to have a, some teams break out and kind of do some surprising things with VP making it to the finals, um, beating us, beating Astralis, uh, Gambit making it to the finals as well, beating Navi in that side of the bracket and making the deep run. CIS teams were the big storyline here. I don't want to say it was expected, but I think certainly I know for myself and the team, and I imagine if you talk to a lot of the other pro teams, Playing teams like Spirit and VP and Gambit in practice, um, even if we go back to last year with the old Team Liquid roster, um, has been like a pretty tough and pretty frustrating affair. Um, they've been they've been steadily improving is essentially what I'm trying to say. So to see them play well isn't necessarily a surprise, but to see them get this deep into the tournament and have so many teams, you know, three CIS teams in the in the top four, um, two CIS teams in the final, and none and neither of them were Navi um, was is a pretty is a pretty shocking result. But I think a lot of teams have been watching the improvement of these CIS squads. Um, for months and months and months. So um, this is a nice culmination of hard work for those guys.